Welcome back, Stasa23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and I uh, got a new knife for y'all today. This is the Alliance Design um, Laconico Angry Baby Bear. That's yeah, a mouthful. This guy comes in uh, on Blade HQ site at $360, and uh, with this tie frame and the four hole pattern, you can also get it with. Uh, black tie with a uh, carbon fiber inlay that pretty much takes up the majority of the uh, front show scale and that one's four hundred dollars you can also get it with stone washed uh, tie with a carbon fiber inlay in the uh, in the knife as well it comes in uh, just a white box with like that and this pouch and um, after checking out this pouch, these are I'm not certain. I haven't read it anywhere, but I'm pretty sure these are made by Riot, uh, especially from what I'm seeing and <coughs> all the stuff that came with it. Uh, and let's let's look at this knife up close. You have this this I think it's attractive uh, modified Tanto blade, kind of like a modified. Uh, harpoon tanto with this nice top swedge uh, still have a nice robust tip for piercing you have this multifaceted grind you have a flat grind on the tanto tip that's a little bit thicker and you have a nice if I can show you that a nice deep hollow ground uh, uh, primary bevels right here with a uh, horizontal satin on the primary and you have a, um, I'm sorry, a vertical satin on the primary and a horizontal satin on the flats. Very, very nice finishing work there. Um, you have no billboarding whatsoever on either side. I like that nice sterile blade. You have a, um, a blade of RWL 34. I uh, haven't had much experience. I know that's a, a steel that um, that Riot tends to use. I know on all the Alliance designs so far, I'm pretty sure that's the latest steel they've been using. I know that's what the Grimms Mo's use on their knives, and uh, from what I'm told, it's it's good to go steel. I think I think it's an analog of um, CPM 154. I may be mistaken on that, but. Go do your homework if you want to know. I just got this not too long ago. <clears throat> um, this deep hollow grind. This is kind of what sold me on this knife. When I started feeling feeling this at Blade Show, kind of got excited about it. All their knives are ground to be nice cutters. So far, that I felt. And this guy, when I got home, I measured it. Behind the edge thickness at the thinnest portion is 14 thousandths. Now, the thickest portion before the Tanto is 17 thousandths. And um, that's at 18 degrees per side. Nice, even bevels on both sides. You got your nice uh, Spanish notch or sharpening chaw right there. Perfectly done. <coughs> you have that nice belly, kind of like a recurve right here. And... Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I haven't had to sharpen this guy yet. I don't know how that's going to be to sharpen, but I will find out. I don't know if, I'll, if it's going to give me any trouble with my Wicked Edge or not. Hopefully not. Uh, let's go back. Let's close this guy up. <clears throat> oh, and you also have Laconico written on the spine. I like that. Just to keep the rest of the blade sterile. Um, you have bronze titanium scales. That have been uh, contoured, as you can see, rounded, contoured, whatever you want to call it, 3D contoured. <clears throat> you, you have a four hole pattern that's well done, nice and chamfered inside the holes, clean holes, no chatter marks. And I like how you can see the blade in there, it's like a window to the blade. Uh, <clears throat> you also have two body screws that are titanium. And they've been bronzed. Got a lanyard hole. You have a stainless steel uh, pivot. And all these are Torx T8. 
flipper tab right there. On this side, you have a carbon fiber backspacer. Nice little touch. And on this side, you have a very nice looking uh, 3D milled titanium pocket clip that's very nice and softened, in the, like this area, the whole thing, with titanium uh, screws that have been bronzed as well. There is no lock bar insert, but they <laughs> they did carbonize the lock face on here for um, you know for for slowing down the wear process and you won't have any lock stick if everything's done right on the geometry of the lock face <clears throat> the centering is dead centered nice action riding on ceramic bearings and ceramic detent nice snappy action you have some cutouts inside the lock bar area to get to the lock bar, it is, it is sitting flush, but uh, with those cutouts, you can get your thumb in there to disengage that lock bar. You have no internal milling, just the the, the out, outer milling done right here. Um, this knife is fairly lightweight. It comes in at 3.6 ounces, so I call it a lightweight. <clears throat> um... Let's see what else. It goes in and out of the pocket pretty nicely. It is it does have a good bit of uh, tension on there, but it will hold it in that pocket nicely. It's not deep carry. You have about this much sticking out, which I'm okay with. <coughs> um, let's let's take a look at some size comparisons, and then I'm going to tell you a few things that I'm not in love with about the knife. Now, when I say there's stuff I, I'm, I'm nitpicking or not in love with, stuff that I want to let you be aware of, but it wasn't enough stuff to uh, be deal breakers that I didn't purchase it myself. So, just letting y'all know that. First is the small Sabenza Insingo Sabenza, which the, the Sabenza is just a tad bit longer. Uh, I mean, it, it probably you probably can't tell, but if you stand up straight up, you can see. And uh, the paramilitary three. Param Paramilitary's got more handle, but you have more cutting edge on the um, lines design. And two more. Got the Wii Pleroma. These two are very close as well, but the Pleroma is a little bit bigger. And the closest uh, in size to this is the Ace Biblio. These two are really close. Um, I think the Alliance, yeah, the Alliance design is a hair bit longer, but pretty close and same. Uh, you have a little bit more handle in the, uh, <laughs> in the uh, Biblio, but you got more cutting edge there. Alrighty. Oh, I don't know if I talked about the ergonomics. They're okay. They're pretty, I mean, uh, the, the handle's pretty comfortable because of the contouring on there. Um, there's not any real sharp edges. Hey, the edge, hey, I'm, oh, <laughs> that's my daughter. Um, so let's talk about a few things that I'm not in love with. Um, I could have probably done without this, that little hump right there, that that's somewhat of a recurve, but it, that's not really, that's just something that, uh, it didn't bother me that bad. Um, but we close this guy up, and the flipper tab is probably the thing that bugs me the most. I just don't understand uh when they make flipper tabs like this, you got you got a small little hook in that flipper tab. No jumping, you don't need it. But the way if you if you hold it if you flip it like that, which is how you you know with the no thought at least for me is putting my finger in that little point right there. And after a lot of flipping, it starts to be rather uncomfortable for me. And the only way to kind of not be that uncomfortable is if I put my finger right up here 
and pull back, but that's just uncomfortable and that's not how I would open the knife. So I would have much rather see this flipper tab canted back a little bit, kind of like a lot of the Ferrum Forge knives. Or let's see, even on this one, how the, it's, it's canted back, they could have put some jimping and like cut that back some it would have been a lot more comfortable but you see time and time again when when they the flipper tab designs are just i don't know <laughs> i guess an afterthought um another thing when it going about after i flip it uh i like how they did this right here but the lock bar has a good bit of tension and it's not the easiest thing to disengage uh, unless I do the claw method and stick my finger in between there, that's a lot easier. But my normal uh, way to do it is to put my thumb right there. And being that the, the, the oh, watch out, baby. Being that the frames are pretty thin, you get a thin portion right there. So I, my thumb, whenever I push down, I'm, I'm pushing down on this line right there. So it's not the most comfortable. So I tend to use the fat of my finger and push on it like that, which is, is okay. And if I'm starting to be sore, I will do that. Um, let's see, another thing. This kind of just throws off my OCD tendencies here. You got bronze hardware, bronze uh, scales, and then you have a uh, just a, a satin pivot. I don't understand why they couldn't have went with a titanium pivot and bronze it as well i think it would have been a nice contrast i guess they're tying in the blade i, I don't know um let's see also i was cutting up some boxes the other day and i will say if you have if you have any larger hands than medium sized hands this is definitely not gonna be the knife for you because i just barely get a four finger grip on there um that flipper tab kind of pushes me back and i gotta kind of make sure my hands pushed up right here to get a full four finger grip uh, i didn't feel like i was gonna slip at all because i did make sure my hands placed right and in this in the hammer grip it was it was fairly comfortable to cut with especially being that this thing's a slice and dream um uh <laughs> i know it sounds like i hate the knife but i'm just i'm just pointing out these details also, this where they put this uh, that lanyard hole in there, and they got this this sharp little area right here. This area right here, and the back side of that clip right there is kind of pokey. And this side, so whenever sometimes whenever I gripped it, <laughs> I could feel that this portion of the clip sitting right here in the palm of my hand. I just readjust so I wouldn't feel it. And uh, two more things. I, I'm not a huge fan of them tapping straight into the titanium, going straight through. There's no. Uh, I would rather some female, some female uh, spacers or something, something for them to go into. Because if for some reason you strip out this side, your knife's you know done unless they 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 give you a new lock side and i, I mean i've never had to use riot's warranty i'm sure they probably would but i just i would rather not see that and all of all their designs so far are like that i know that's money saving cost just like and this is the last thing that i'm gonna talk about just like not having the lock bar insert which is fine i would have rather them they carbonized it I would have rather them heat treat the uh, lock face like they do on the uh, Sabenzas because that's going to last a lot longer than carbonization, at least in my experience. I have a carbonizer, so it's not really an issue for me to put more carbonizer, carbonize the lock face whenever it wears out, and it will wear out. So you, whenever it wears out on you, you can either let the lock wear you know, the titanium wear and get sticky and lock stick and stuff like that. Or you can send it to somebody to get done or send it back to the company. So those are just things that like, feels like they cut corners that they shouldn't have, uh, especially with, you know, such a, a nice quality piece. Um, but, you know, 
the the reason why I decided to get this, uh, you know, I, like I said, that nice thin hollow grind. So it's going to be a great cutter for a long time. I can sharpen this thing for ages and it's going to be great. My dog's about to go crazy. And I, I like Ray Laconico's designs. I love them. Um, I own several of his designs. And, I, uh, you know, for me to buy one of his custom pieces like this, it, it's not going to be cheap. So this is somewhat of a bargain, you know. I know it's not cheap by any means, but for what you're getting, um, I think it's pretty good. So, yeah, my dog says it's time for me to go. So, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up so I can see who's all liking the videos. And um, if you're not already and you like my videos, hit that subscribe button. Show me some support. And I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.